everything's all right. Not everything's much. good. We're good. We're here. Yeah. Coming up next, you know him also from the Eva Dare series, and he was also a Tolicus in Hercules. And from my favorite television show that I have watched from beginning to end, maybe four times, like I've never even seen it before, Burn Notice, Mr. Bruce Campbell. Mm, mm, mm. All right, mm, all right. Mm. And last but not least, the son of Olympus, the son of Zeus himself. The son of a gun. <laughs> From Andromeda. And God's <laughs> the son of, a, son of a you know Mr. what. Mr. <laughs> Kevin Serbo as Hercules. There it is, and I'm not disappointed. Yeah. yeah. Hercules. <laughs> First of all, how are you guys doing today? It's a Sunday, laid back. Did you guys get some football in today? Yeah, there's a good game on right now. It's 28 to 28. Oh, yeah, man. what are we doing here with you? I guess <laughs> you guys. I'll see you hey, hey, my <laughs> Green Bay to lose, though. I'm a Viking guy. Hey, my team did their job already. We played the Falcons today, so we're pretty good. Who that to the Saints fans out there? All right, man, let's get this thing started, man. First of all, I want to say personally for me, you guys have shaped TV for me from the 90s going up forward. You mean to tell me? Hercules and 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 everybody here, you, you guys did an amazing show. You guys set the tone for what it meant to go outside and play with sticks and swords and call them swords and think we were playing some type of imaginary game. So just want to thank you guys for all the work you've done over the years. Uh, my first question is, what do you guys think, and anybody can answer this, what do you guys think about the legacy that the show has, even in today's era where people are coming out and saying like, hey, this show was the show for me. What about you, Mr. Ted? Well, look, first of all, it's been 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> a long time. You know, and Ted? I think I got to Ted, I got to correct you. It's been 27 years. Xena oh, started Christ. in 1995. Right. <laughs> Sorry. No, but I'm saying it's unbelievable. <laughs> that just makes me feel older. But I got to admit, I know, I know but, but, but honestly, look, I, you know, I was just a guest star on the show a few times, but in, it really is a testament to Kevin and all um, <laughs> all the things he did and all those creators of that show that made that thing available and amazing so that we're all talking about it like almost 30 years later. So yep. it's, it's unbelievable. Well, we had we had a distinct advantage. And I think Kevin and and. Ted, you'll back me up on this. There wasn't really a studio. This was syndicated television, which right. was honestly, it's like the B movie of, of television. We were like the, the B string. And my manager could never understand why I'm coming down there to, to work on this show. It wasn't network. It was syndicated. And I kept telling him, dude, okay, A, they pay us real money. B, we can get away with murder. Because you. there's no studio, you know, Kevin, we we shot stuff during days where if it didn't work on the page, we fixed it. We fixed it right oh. there. And, and then, then also, if I remember right, look, these are like pre-internet days. So if you wanted to change a the line, they had to get on a sat phone back to Los Angeles. There really weren't cell phones. And then at that point, it wasn't going to happen. No, yeah, it's a we, day ahead and five hours. So it's like, well, do we want to wake the writers up at 1 a.m. or just change no. the line now? <laughs> well, we would lie. As a, I went down there to direct, and we would just lie and go, oh, oh, we're on the next episode. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, it was great. Now, question? Kevin, I have a question for you. Go for it. Great trivia about Kevin Sorbo and New Zealand. Pre-Hercules. You know what I'm talking about, Kevin. What? What's this story? I don't know this. What one. got oh. you to New Zealand before Hercules? Oh, my God. I did a Jim Beam commercial. And uh, I was down there <laughs> in Auckland. There was a 10-day shoot down there. And it was amazing because it was, like, supposed to be a bar in Oklahoma. Why, why did we didn't shoot in Oklahoma? I have no idea. But there's, like, five people in that commercial. There's, like, five people in the commercial that ended up being on, on Hercules, of course. And I kept saying, this place is amazing. I want to come back here someday and spend more time. Of course, a year and a half later, we get Hercules, and I'm down there from well, 1993. Wait, I want to know why it took you 10 days to shoot a one-day Jim Beam spot. What were you doing the other nine days? Um, I was Beam. golfing a lot. And, uh, you know. <laughs> I may have been gone out a few times to meet some women, but you know. Well, <laughs> I, I love the fact that early on, people would come up to Kevin and go, oh yeah, he's a Jim Beam guy, oh yeah. And I think Kevin <laughs> thought that was funny, 
because Hercules did not get on the air in New Zealand for about two years after that. So right. Kevin had a couple of years of doing whatever he wanted to do down there. And then after that, oh, now he's Hercules. <laughs> you know, it was so funny. I got to tell one story. There was a guy who came up to me at the Les Mills gym. Les Mills is named after the mayor of that city. That's, that was my gym that I used to work out at. And he walks up to me and he goes, so you're that Hercules guy, eh? And I said, well, I'm an actor playing Hercules. Uh, yeah, I've been to America. I hated it. And I said, well, don't go back there. We got enough assholes there already. And I was waiting for him to hit me in the head with a dumbbell or something. But I thought it was a pretty good comeback. It was good. <laughs> oh, yeah, mate. Yeah. Yeah, the guy. Now, yeah, I, love that. I love that down there. Bruce, we had a blast down there. I love that down there. The people are great. The food's fantastic. And it's Ted, you were down there a lot, too. I mean, obviously, we, when we spun Xena off, that same year, there was Sheena, um, uh, Sinbad, Rob, yeah, there was a lot Arden, of those. Conan. All these shows tried to copy what we had going. Yeah, a million of them. Yeah, there was, was a million of them. But I, but it was a great, it was a great place to shoot. We, I, you know, I did feel like we were away from the Los Angeles media machine, and so I felt like all of us were sort of like doing a first night every single time. I sort of felt that vibe. You know, you kind of get jaded if you're on a popular show, God willing, but which we were, but we didn't really know it. Yeah, because we're so far away. You know, we're, we're 9,000 miles away from L.A. And uh, I started getting all these vi invites, all these parties and Hugh Hefner's mansion and screening the movies. <laughs> I couldn't know any of them. Sorry. <laughs> well, Sorry. yeah, because by the time you got there, you'd have to turn around and come back and go back to work. Yeah, <laughs> true. That's true. But so, you know what? I, now, guys, here's what I learned. I learned discipline from the Kiwi system because under the Kiwis, as a director, my first day of shooting, Kevin, it was a, to you, it was an, another day. I think I came in near the end of the first season to direct and I wanted an hour of overtime. And the assistant director has to ask all the people around, like, are we going to give this guy an hour of overtime? And they obviously, they, they took pity on me. They go, Oh, yeah, right, you're new. So, yeah, this one time. So I got one hour of overtime as a director my first day. And they kind of said, don't ask for it again. Just like, just don't. And I was like, okay, okay. So it was 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And guys, you know this. We could eat out at a restaurant every night at 7.30 p.m. because they were done. It, I, went, and, I, went, I went straight to the gym two hours every day. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. That's where I was every day at 7.30. Hey, Something Ted, like Ted, the last Let's time I with. saw you, we were at some con, and I ran into you at the gym. Remember that? That's true. We saw you at the gym. Forgot about got, that. That's we got true. a question. We got a question from one of the fans, and it's something I, I wanted to ask as well. Can't because... you see we're talking here? What? For heaven's sake. <laughs> tell those fans to... So Amber yeah, wants to know, Amber, uh, Amber, I'm going to not pronounce your last name because it's very long, but Amber Renee says, what are some injuries you guys got on set? Because you're working in New Zealand. Like you guys said, there were so many other shows filming there, um, including one of my favorite shows. Power Kevin, you got, you got whacked. What kind of injuries did you guys get? I had a lot. I mean, I was doing you. most, I mean, Bruce said the fights came down there, but I was doing two to three fights every episode. That was sort of what the, you know, the, the rules for each episode were. And right. I got, you know, I got a lot of stuff, a lot of cuts, a lot of bruises, a lot of sprains. But the worst one happened with Michael Hurst, of all things. Uh, it was at the end of season two. It was actually when we're introducing the Xena character, or the trilogy of Xena. <laughs> and uh, M Michael, I had a hard time with the writers. And so I fought him. I said, why would my best friend turn against me so easily? I know, that, that was a tough one for me. <laughs> but anyway, um we end up getting this big sword fight going on. And during the rehearsal, Peter Bell, our stunt choreographer, had me do this one 360 move, getting down basically on my knees and spin. And Michael's supposed to swing at my head, which is up here. Well, in the first rehearsal, it brushed just the top of my head. And I said, dude, I don't like that move. Mike goes, oh, mate, don't worry. I'm the New Zealand fencing champion. It goes all this stuff. <laughs> the very first take, he hits me. I'm down. They're rushing me to the hospital. I have a concussion. I got my head split up in the back. You watch the replay, and he hit me with the flat part of the sword, thank God. It wasn't that. But he's also like this. Eyes completely closed. <laughs> wasn't even looking. 
And okay. As you know, you're so you mean to tell me you guys yeah. are using well, real I'm swords? I'm not going to tell a story out of school about Michael Hurst, but I'm going to tell a story out of school about Michael Hurst. All right. <laughs> Michael knew that the stunt guys, Peter Bell, who was a very good stunt coordinator, these guys were pretty tough guys, the stunt oh, yeah. guys. And so Michael Hurst was like, hey, if I actually hit the guy, we don't ever have to go again. I'll never, I'll never miss. So, you know, I'll, I'll tag the guy, hit the guy. So <laughs> he's, Michael Hurst is doing a fight scene with Peter Bell, the stunt guy, because they would often double a soldier or whatever. Sure. And this particular headpiece was this thing that came down, an elaborate metal piece that came down to the middle of your forehead. And Michael Hurst had to palm his hand into, into Peter Bell's forehead. And of course he connected. So he imprinted this metal thing <laughs> into Peter Bell's head. And no stunt guy, you guys all know this, they're never gonna call cut. They're never gonna yell or, hey, you, you freaking actor, you hit me. Well, we call cut and I'm the director. So I'm looking at Peter Bell in the background and he whips his helmet up and throws it across the room. He turns back around, he has blood pouring down his forehead from michael hurst but we printed the tape shoot i remember when they were trying to teach me basic sword technique which i knew none of peter bell scott i only had a week to learn it when i got there and hercules and he goes he goes now take form one i said what take form one like form one like you know a fencing form i didn't know what he was talking about yeah like what? So what he gave up after about an hour and just went Always think stoil. I said, what? <coughs> pink stoil. Pink, pink, pink smile? No, pink, pink style, he was saying. Pink I style. <laughs> yeah. One thing I, I caught you said, you, you, Kevin, you said you're glad it wasn't the sword part of the sword. So you're telling me you guys were using real swords, not prop material? Well, this was, this was still, you know, during season two, and there, there were like, there was like a metal there. It was, I mean, it was, it was blunt, but it was still sharp. Gotcha. So they kind of switched to a different weapon because he almost killed me. But oh, uh, I think there was, I think, I still look. remember there was a mixture of genuine, you know, I'm, there was, you know, you know, there was, there was actual false. They had to swords. take a beating. They had to be able to. Yeah, take a and there was yeah. also like yeah. real props. And like, guys, plus this was a bit of the Kiwi mentality. Oh yeah, you want a Hercules table? Well, we're going to build the proper table. <laughs> I went to move some furniture on the set just between takes. I went, oh god, god. I about threw my back out. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh my god, <clears throat> these are real logs. This is a real log table. So yeah. They took it pretty seriously. Even Peter they Jackson they apparently it. liked the heavy swords for his movies. He he liked having a heavy sword. I'm like, like whatever. But it was okay, fun. Gotta... I gotta still say, I had such a blast doing it. I, I, did, I did most of my own stunts because I enjoyed it because my ego started did. to do it. And it was just a lot of fun doing it. Ted, we got a question for you from Olivia Estrada. Did you ever think that Jock's a character would be such an impact, have such an impact on fans like it did? Uh, no, <clears throat> I didn't think I'd be here this far long after, frankly. I No, I didn't know that. I was an, I was an add-on. But the good news is, after you know, while I was doing Xena, they allowed me to come as often as I, I could to join the Hercules cast, which I think I only got to do like two or three times. But I love that interaction because it reminded, it was, I don't know if a show has done that since, where you have two concurrent shows and characters kind of fling from show to show. The last time I ever saw that was during the 1970s when I was a kid, and Laverne and Shirley and Happy Days characters would often be on each other's show. <laughs> All right, right. It was like that, it was like crazy. I don't even know. I mean, now they do it with Marvel characters in movies and yeah. on, on, on cable, they do that. But like, it was sort of an anomaly, but no, I, I didn't think it would last. Hey, Ted, Ted, you and I have the distinction of uh... I directed you in, I believe, the most reviled Xena episode. Which one? Called the, the Key to the Kingdom. Because, uh, look, <laughs> Xena was a little more of a serious show. Hercules was a little lighter. Little Billy got his medicine yes. back. But in Xena, it was a little darker. But we had this very ridiculous script called The Key to the Kingdom. And starring Ted, I'm that. like, all right, Ted. Here we go. Wow. Well, so, yeah. I mean, and I remember on you... parade. And I just... I remember the reaction from some of the Xena yeah. fans. And I they actually get, thought you, they're very you militant. Great, you did a great <laughs> job directing that one. And the audience absolutely oh, no. hated it. 
<laughs> no. Wow. No. Hey, Kevin, I got a question for you. Do you have any episodes that, of Hercules that you did that you thought were awesome, but that fans went, what were you thinking, Kevin? Um, you know what? I, I, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of it. The only thing I can think of is for me, one of my favorite, I mean, I started directing on Hercules too. And that was the first time I, I started doing. It. And uh, my first episode was The Apple in season three. And I take t full, full responsibility for casting Alexander Tidings to play Aphrodite. And she ended up being a regular on both, both series. Yeah, good choice. Yeah, it was, it was great. Now we got a question for Bruce. Yeah, because you know you're the comedy guy, you're the comedic guy, you keep the jokes going. For you, did you enjoy? And this question comes out from somebody named Zena Rivers, <laughs> to be exact. Did you enjoy doing the comedy yeah, episodes see, or the serious episodes? Show as well. Uh, you know, look, any actor, we like variety. So <laughs> Hercules had a lot of goofy episodes, yeah. and they had some serious episodes. And I think, I think Hercules took a slightly more serious turn as it went. You know, Kevin, I directed you guys in this series finale. It was had some jokes, but it was still, we we had to tell this overarching story. So, and then Xena was a little more, a little more serious. Yeah. So whenever I got there, I felt a little more like comic relief on Xena more than Hercules. Cause in Xena, I'm trying to get in her pants and Hercules, I'm just trying to steal shit. That's right. I mean, you, you can't know, beat but, both. But the whole the whole idea, I think, for, for Hercules, we knew early on, being Sam Raimi attached to it, Ted's brother, brother, of course, is, um, you know, that shtick, that whole, you know, evil dead stuff. I mean, it's all about really, let them laugh with us instead of laugh at us. It just, it makes it easier. You know, I, yeah. I don't mind the Gilligan wipe and things like that. I think that people <laughs> love that stuff. Yeah, and the, the other thing that I, I think Hercules was, was really unique in is that every show about Hercules or movie rather before Hercules was Hercules, shall we not go to the temple? Yes, we shall. It was all done in this kind of false, bad Shakespearean quasi bravado <laughs> nonsense. I, I, every I, single. Yeah. And, and, and they, and, and, and I, to all, to great credit to Kevin is that, you know, he played that bit of just being a guy, a modern guy, who happened to be Hercules, you know, great. And um, I don't know if anybody could have really done it quite as well as, as Kevin did. Oh, I think I think a lot of the show success really has to do with him. So, yeah, that. Uh, you're, you're yeah, because, you know, you also didn't go surfer dude either. That's no. right. He could have. You know, that yeah. that wasn't the shtick either. It was a, in a, it's like an approachable Hercules. That What I actually like, he's half, he's only half God. And... To me, that always set the scene for any time he needed to show vulnerability, he could. Right. Because, right. you know, he one was like my, Spock. He was uh, he had a parent who was human. One of my favorite guys on set was George Lyle. OK, George Lyle from from England, very dry sense of humor. And the first time Bruce directed, Bruce is the Three Stooges guy. And the first time he directed um, at the end of the first scene, Bruce behind the camera goes, wah, 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 like that. And there's a pause, and George Lyle says, that must be American for cut. And I just yeah. often never <laughs> Yeah, George was the assistant director. He suffered no fools, uh, even the directors. But, I, but you got to like him because he kept it going. Oh, dog, he had my timeline. I called it George's real time timeline because we stuck to a schedule. <clears throat> I'd give George my, my shooting, my shot list, and we would argue. We'd get in these verbal fights about it because he'd go, oh, yeah, we need to be done by 11 a.m. I go, it's impossible. He goes, well, then we're fucked in the afternoon if we're not. You know, I mean, he really laid it all. And he was right every time. I argued every time, and he was always right. The crews there, guys, to this day, they have, they still have great crews in New Zealand. However, this fell sure. off the tree. Back. From Herc and Xena, they went on to Lord of the Rings. Exactly. They, Exactly. You know. I was just going to say that. They won the Lord of the Rings. They won Academy Awards for the creatures they created. Nyla Dixon did all of our wardrobe. She was amazing. She won yeah. wardrobe. Oscar well. winner. I mean, amazing. Amazing crew. So that little country. But I'll tell you, hardworking people. Awesome. And the one thing I got for you guys, and this is me com coming from me as a fan growing up, you had both of these shows on and for, for my syndication. They came on on Friday night. So Friday night was a night I was going to get to stay up a little bit longer. 
got my got my food, whatever I was gonna eat. So it's gonna be Hercules, and it's gonna be Xena, and then after that's gonna be wrestling. So it's just a night of just testosterone for an eight year old in the night. <laughs> <laughs> so did you looking back? Did you guys see? Um, and I know one of you mentioned the fact that you were over in New Zealand, and then the the hype of the show was going on back in the states. Once you started getting those letters and that fan mail and the the reviews and everything, were, were you thinking like, you know what? Well, I, did, I didn't think this was going to go like this. Well, did you guys have any of that well, indication? I got I got to go back. To, we did five two-hour movies before it became a series. And right. it was in the third movie where Michael Hurst and I really hit um, this Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid thing from the movies, not the real Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, mm-hmm. where we had a moment and I said, told, looked at Michael and I said, this is it. This is what people are going to love. And I remember telling my manager during that, right in the middle of that shoot of that third movie, I said, I guarantee you they're going to make this a TV series because there's nothing like it on TV right now. Universal called about three weeks later and said, you're staying down there. We love what we see. They haven't even brought, put up the first movie yet. And they said, we love what we see and you're going to stick around there. We're going to give, there was five shows that they did called, it was called the uh, action pack. I don't know if you guys know. Right. Yeah. They had tech, they had tech yeah. wars, midnight run, uh, Vanishing Sun, all that stuff. And I was told by, it was si- Sidney Scheinberg, right? Was the head of Universal at the time, I think. I think he was. He, I had a meeting with him back at Universal, and he said, I got to tell you, when we looked at these shows, we figured you'd be the first to go, and you're the last one around. So it shows you, once again, they, de- they don't know. They don't know what people are going to like, and yeah. it's, it's all throwing spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, Hercules, Hercules followed a very pleasant arc though i mean he was the good guy he yeah. was flawed he was human so it, it held him back sometimes um but i tell you there was nothing more fun than to run into actors like kevin smith who played aries and he did both shows also uh uh ted you did a few different shows i did different shows uh, robert mm-hmm. trevor did different shows as sanctimonious or excuse me uh, salamonious <laughs> Uh, you know, but it was really, uh, it, it was fun to, to be able to work in that environment, uh, in, in a free association. I, I don't think I've been that free to be able to do what we had to do on set really since then. No, uh, I, I hadn't either. And, and just, I remember just prior to that, Bruce, you, it's rare. you, you had, done a few years of briscoe county and i had done a few years of sequest dsv and those were both big network shows that went do not change that line or we will kill you and we'll kill everybody you know you have to make a phone call you You have to make a phone call and but i i sort of i mean we it was still the protocol then to, to contact the writers fellas if i'm not mistaken but it was such a pain in the ass to do that they seldom did and so we were all sort of a, a little free forming, if I if I remember right. Oh, there was a lot. Oh. Of, was, we had lived a lot, I think. And oh my god, there was a lot. Look, of living, yeah, stuff would just come up, and we got to go with it. That's the beauty of it, you know. Uh, it was uh, you guys just vanquished war, so we did the war, huh? What is it good for? Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. nothing. You know, whatever we thought of, we could just do at the time, knowing that oh, hey, you cut it out if it doesn't work. And that right there. As the, as this thing, this disappointed thing is so huge. Every fan, every time I do a Comic Con show, somebody asks, "Hey, how did that happen?" Here's the thing: I was, I was the sovereign. I was in the alter, you know, bilateral universe of Hercules, and that's what you know, Ted was in as well, and uh, and of course Bruce was too. And I end up in the wrong. I, I realize I'm not. I go, this isn't my. This isn't my world. And I thought of Kevin Klein in A Fish Called Wanda, where he yells out, "Disappointed!" like two or three times. And I didn't yell it out. People think people think it was supposed to be in parentheses, and I'm supposed to read the line in a disappointed way. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. And I yelled it out. And now this has become a meme, and it's like 20 million hits on on the internet on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I love it, and I, I it just kind of speaks to the fact that we had a lot of open dialogue on the show, and uh, we also yes. had, in the read throughs we had at the hotel there, off in by the what was oh, the hotel we all stayed yeah. at? Yeah. I remember, I remember one of those read-throughs with you guys at a at a Herc read-through, and I was like, I couldn't, I didn't know where you were. I was reading this. I remember reading the script, going, "Where are they?" <laughs> it's like, oh, they're all ad libbing. Everyone's like, "Well, instead of a read-through, read sometimes we would have a write-through." It was a little yeah. bit more like a write-through, yeah. Yeah, bring your pens. 
<laughs> yeah. remember, on the, remember on the wardrobe bus, uh, Bruce, we had the phone in there. And I was running up about $2,000 a month on the phone, <laughs> talking to the writers back. Because I was always like three episodes ahead saying, guys, I don't get this. Or help me with this. Or I love this. Or whatever. And you know, what I loved about the writers, what they did, they put a lot of good moral messages in the show. And I got it through the fan mail. It did. Say, you know what? I, you know, I know I get angry and I want to beat the kids up to bully me in school, but you know, Hercules taught me that I don't have to fight. And I thought that was pretty cool that they're doing stuff like that. And that is cool. Well, I got, I got some fan mail that was very happy that I taught some kid how to pickpocket. He was so <laughs> delighted. <laughs> so delighted with that. Yeah. You know, I, he's I, doing well today. <laughs> I understand why on one level, why people might like Joxer and that, you know, he's a good hearted guy, but I mean, the, I, what I didn't understand was like, I wanted to be just like Jackson. You mean you want to like lie, drink, and go to whorehouses all day? Like that's yeah, no idiot. It's called, yeah, it's called a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Another question we got from Autumn Dunn. She basically says, "If you did, what props did you get on set, or do you still what, have to what this props day? did we get? Like, like what props did we use? Are you still? Did you take with you? Did oh, you take I any have, props?" Yeah, Did you steal I, have, any props? I have all of them. Well, not all of them. I have everything but the little tiny knife that I used, you know, the doctor comedy, like one inch knife that he would use. But I have the sword. I've got the full costume. Yeah, I, they I, they offered it to me at the yeah. last day. And I went, yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got a lot of them. I've got three of the original five Hercules outfits. I mean, the pants, people don't realize those pants were three layers of leather. And they, had, I mean, they would stretch with all the sweat and the fight scenes. Gross. And they retighten them. So, um, but they weighed 12 pounds. People don't realize how wow. happy Wait a minute. Kevin, you had how many versions of that costume? They had five. And I, so I, I have three, I have three of them. I've got a lot of the swords, but I didn't, you know, they just, I said, can I have it? Can I have it? So I've got the apple from the first time I directed. It's a pretty cool little gold apple where Michael Hurst every cool. time he touches it. He, the woman that's supposed to marry this prince from another kingdom falls in love with him and the family start fighting and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here's my end of the series story with Kevin Sorbo. Is I'm directing the series. It's the series finale, right? So we shoot you and Michael Hurst walking across the sand dunes, oh. and we lost the sun at the end of that take. The, the 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 wind rippled. It caught this this sand. It was beautiful. It was a crane oh. shot. Five minutes later, it would have been impossible. So we're riding on the stake bed truck back to the base camp and I went you know this is when we should be popping the champagne we this is it we did we shot the last shot but no 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 so the following day it's a shot with Kevin Sorbo Tracy Lords is in the episode it was a really good episode she was my ex-wife it was a really tight episode so Kevin's last scene well I'll see you. I'm going to three so okay I'll tell the kiss. okay heck it is Goodbye. And he leaves and he walks out the door and Kevin never had to walk back in. They kept rolling and they, they brought out the big, brilliant sword, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone from the front office came in, all the tears were flowing and Kevin gives the big speech. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're not done shooting. No, 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 no. The next day I'm on second unit out in, in, they called it lion park. One of these God forsaken back lots. I'm wearing fucking, leader hose it's the opposite of the world down there so it's it's raining sideways underneath <laughs> those easy up that, that we were trying to protect ourselves with so that's my last day it was <laughs> it, we were in a, a fucking monsoon and it would stop filming for like one second they go oh yeah come on let's go out and shoot a fight fight scene we go out and shoot monsoon comes we'd hide under the easy up yeah that was my last fucking day on <laughs> We got a film question here. Michael Brooks says, question from a field student acting in and directing his first movie. How would you recommend communicating with your actors to direct them as directors yourself? Bruce, Kevin? Uh, golf. Kevin. Golf with your leading actor. Good answer. Well, because, you know, look, Kevin and I are of similar age. I just finished The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. It was a single camera action show very similar format. So I thought, okay, I think this is possible. I bugged my buddy, Rob Tapper. I said, Rob, how bad could it be? Come on, let me direct. So I go down there and I'm sort of hiding on set, watching Sorbo work. They're like, does he yell? What does he, does he know his lines? What's his deal? And I finally meet him and he goes, 
So, Campbell, do you golf? I'm like, uh, 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 sure, yeah, yeah, I golf. Of course I golf. What are you, crazy? So that's sort of how we bonded was New Zealand golf. And they have beautiful courses, as Kevin can attest. So I let Kevin beat me week <laughs> after week. <laughs> That's right. That's very nice you know, of you, it's Kevin. Fun going, it's fun golfing with Kevin Smith, though, too, because Kevin, um, when when he had bad shots, which was a lot of them, um, he would he would get down and start doing push-ups in the middle of the fairway. So it's pretty cool. Show off. <laughs> so nice. this, this, this show has spanned the test of time. Would you want to see a Hercules Legendary Journey reboot? Yeah or no? Here's, here's, here's my wish as an actor, Okay. I would love another seven-year run down in New Zealand. I can bring back Hercules, age me up, let me play Zeus because I'm too freaking old to play Hercules now. And I would just retire down there. I, I would love to uh, finish out my career in another uh, TV series like that. I had a, I, As I, Zeus, I, good. I had a it was beautiful down there. Yeah, so, I think that's a good – look, I, I get asked once in a while if I would reprise my role as Joxer. Yeah, but only if I was Joxer's dad because – Nobody wants to see a 54-year-old guy taking falls. You know, this like it's sad. If you're 25, no, like I was, Ted, that's one thing. And then if Ted, you're like in your 50s, it's like, oh, that poor old guy, somebody help him up. You know, it's, it's like, no, Ted, I disagree. Movie. I disagree. I would love to watch you fall down the stairs at 54. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> so but, yeah. Go ahead. So but yeah, another thing for me, it's looking at all of the things that you guys have done since Hercules. And what I'm hearing is you guys had so much freedom. Why do you think you had that much freedom to be able to put the emphasis that you wanted to on the show? Well, I think distance for one thing, we were in 9,000 miles away down in New Zealand. So there, there were no writers on the set screaming at us. You guys brought up earlier, Ted brought up earlier, changing word. I did an episode of The Commission with Michael Chiklis, the Stephen Canal show, okay? And I flipped a line in there. It still made sense, but the whole set just stopped. Call Stephen, see if that's okay. And I said, well, no, let's go. Let's keep the camera going. Let's do it again. They shut it down for 20 minutes until they got a hold yeah. of come back. That is very standard story. protocol with Kevin. Oh, my God, about. we could have had this done 20 minutes ago. And, yeah. guys, yeah. can I say it ruined me a little bit because I came back to work on American television also. And it was back to that exact same stuff. And what I think these fancy writers don't realize is that they're missing an opportunity. Yeah, put it on that script, write it in your little room. But once you put it on the page with this guy and that guy and that actor and that director, there's other opportunities that come up. So I think what we, we learned as artists is you gotta you gotta stay fluid, man. You know if okay, sure. If you're Patty Chayefsky and you wrote Marty, maybe you'll get the Patty Chayefsky clause in your contract where you can't change right. any lines of dialogue. Right. How many how many writers are Patty Chayefsky? You know, I I think I had that clause on the movie Congo. I think John Patrick Shanley would not let us change a line of dialogue in Congo because I got corrected doing a broadcast to Laura Linney, who was playing my girlfriend in Congo. Like you said, Kevin, I think I did a, I added a um and a well and a hum. And a woman came up with the glasses and the thing and corrected me. And I was, I laughed. I went, are you kidding? And she goes, no, we have, we have to stick to the script. So as a result, here's what it did creatively. It shut me down for the second yeah. take. Now I'm like, I gotta get get these lines just right. I wasn't thinking of performance or anything. Well, guys, I got I got lucky right after that. I went right into Andromeda, which is the first show ever created by Gene Roddenberry. Right. Same thing going. We had, I, I was up in Vancouver, and we were the same thing. We, it was ad lib. We had great rehearsals. Everybody's laughing, having fun. A little more serious show, but we still had a lot of humor in it. But we there was ad libbing on that too. So I had yeah. I had, Zena, Zena definitely right. spoiled us in that regard, but I think I think that the fact that LA was thousands of miles away, and these are just kind of pre-cell phone days when you had to get the sat phone, it made talking to writers very challenging. And so, uh, making up those lines was, was sort of a necessity. But again, not not to say that we wrote all of those scripts. You guys, fans should know that we did have some fine writers on Hercules. Yeah, yeah. some very fine writers, and but we did. Kind of muck with it here and there. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not taking it away from writers either. They did a great yeah. job. If we did stuff, we did it in such a way that for the most time, they could edit it out if they didn't like it. Absolutely. And yeah. look, guys, we never changed the plot. These plots no. were so convoluted in the first place, I wouldn't even know what to start changing you know, the, the mythos of Hercules. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to change that. But, you know, this scene needs a little button at the end. That's mostly what we did. We would add little buttons, little zingers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of my favorite ones was uh, when we were introducing the Golden Hind, who ended up being my wife, uh, the half deer, half woman. And uh, we threw in at the end. I said, well, guys, we got to do this. When he says it was more like a doe, he said a doe, a deer, a female deer. And we threw that in there. That wasn't in the script. <laughs> why, <laughs> why would you not? Why, yeah. why would you he could not. not. Yeah. Straight face, but we were right. able to get it in there. Well, Kevin, we did an episode with the harpies. Yeah. And hate to break it to you, big guy, you got harpies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, none of those lines were and, there. And, but it, and it once happened. you got them, you can get never get rid of them. <laughs> Before we get ready to go, we want people to not forget to the fans that are watching on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, that you still have time to purchase those additional paid exclusives, like one-on-one private chats, and autographs and custom video recordings at wizardworldvault.com. Wizardworldvirtual.com, if I may I correct myself. Wizard so before World. we get ready to go, we have people watching from Italy, Peru, New York, Chicago, United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Montana, Canada, Germany, Oregon, Texas, Seattle, Chicago. With so many people watching this, they all want to know, and this comes from Joe Messa and Cody Miller, what is the most memorable fan experience that you have from around the world and also adding to that let us know something that you got working on or coming up who's going first a fan experience a fan what's the most memorable fan experience that you've had anywhere around the world and well, also it's what, what we do in? is very frivolous but sometimes it does matter i met two different people who were gonna take their own lives but they decided not to because they saw something that I was in that was life affirming. So we joke around a lot. We have a good time, but you know, the, the entertainment, what we do is necessary, even though we were not deemed uh, necessary during the COVID shutdown, what did everybody do? They watched TV shows, movies, podcasts, they read every book, you know, so we, we do have a purpose us as little monkeys who entertain people and, distract them from their lives. So that's that's why I do it, because every so often you get a little good piece of news that what you do does contribute to society. Absolutely. And one thing that you're working on right now that you want to tell everybody about. Uh, well, Ted and I just did our first, uh, well, I hesitate to call it a comedy album, but Ted and I did what is going to be categorized as a comedy album. That's it's right. Called the, it's called The Lost Recordings. Um, the film historian Lames Gipton has found these never before heard uh, recordings of, of the golden age of Hollywood. And they might not be what you would expect. Very, very so, unusual recordings. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say one of the things that probably hit me the hardest. And I've had, I've had this happen five times over my career now, but the very first time um, somebody came on the set that we flew her down for make a wish. And to sit there and think that someone wants to meet you as their make-a-wish when they could have so many other things out there. Wow. And yes. uh, this little girl, um, you know, I kept a brave face for as long as I could. When she left, I just broke down because it's just what she's going through. Was <laughs> yeah. you kind of look at yourself and go, what am I bitching about, you know? All right. Yeah. And, um, it was it was incredibly touching and, and amazing. Everybody in the crew was awesome with her. That's cool. And her, her mom was with her, and it was, it was pretty cool. And uh, I'm working, I'm, as from what I'm working on right now, I've got a couple things. I've got three movies in the can just waiting for them to come out. There's one right behind me, the poster, Miracle in East Texas. I, I was fortunate to direct it. The great Dan Gordon wrote it. He wrote Congratulations. The, he wrote The Hurricane, Denzel Washington. We've got Lou Gossett Jr. in it. we got Tyler Mayne, who's Sabretooth. He's also WWF. And the great John Ratzenberger. And they'll be out next spring. And I have a new uh, comedy with Barry Boswick called The Potwins. It's sort of like Last Man Standing, a Tim Allen show. So... I'll uh, look for that in January of next year. That's cool. And what about you, Miss Ted? Uh, I, I well, I, I completed a, an episode of Creep Show uh, for uh, Shutter TV. It's my second Shutter TV show in the last couple of years, of, and uh, it was exciting. This is a good network to work for, and um, I've just got 
off of a new video game where I'm a playable character, something I've never done before. Wow. So that was fun. And um, uh, now I'm here talking to all you fun folks. Absolutely. Hell yeah. And what was your most memorable fan experience that you've had? I, I, I don't think I can match um, the pathos of Bruce's <laughs> life-saving and Kevin's life-saving <laughs> fan experiences. Um, but I will say I saw a picture recently uh, of, of some fans sent me from Italy, and there were like 40 or 50 fans with a giant post holding a banner that they had made, like a professionally made banner that said, <laughs> We love Ted Raimi, but it, it was it was in Italian, and so it might have said we hate Ted Raimi. I, I couldn't tell, but I think it said they they liked me, and that was incredibly gratifying because it didn't cost first... me that much, Ted. It was only about fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was very gratifying. So uh, w- whenever I see fans who uh, that I now during COVID, there's no way I can go there to to meet them. So I'm I'm very grateful that they're they're there. That's all. Absolutely. We want to thank all of you gentlemen for coming on here with us tonight. We also want to thank all of you at home watching this Wizard World virtual experience. You can also find me, Malcolm, from Fanless Anonymous all over social media, Facebook, YouTube, and occasionally I go to TikTok and Instagram. Thank, thank you, guys. Malcolm. Thank you. And you thank guys you, Malcolm. Good night. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. See you, thank Sorbino. You. See you, Kevin, Theo. Bruce, Malcolm. You guys be good. You be Later. good. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.